and welcome to the next video in the series of how I'm building a drum studio in my back garden. In this video we're going to be looking at the construction of the roof structure. Now when constructing the roof there are a couple of important things you'll need to consider including the size and grade of the timbers, their spacing as well as the overall slope of the roof. With regards to the first you can use a resource in the industry known as span tables and I found a really helpful site which I'll include a link to in the description. The first thing you'll need to know is the clear span or the unsupported distance in between the two walls. In this case, for my build, it's 2.8 metres. We can now take this information and use this helpful website to understand what size timbers we need to use. The first thing we need to understand is the load which the roof will support. Now for a normal roof where you won't need regular access, we're going to go with the lower requirement in this case. I've then decided to use C24 grade timber which is guaranteed to a higher strength rating than C16. This means you can get away with a slightly thinner timber but achieve the same rating. I'm also using 400 centers which helps to maximise the span length for the size of timber you're using. So it's now a case of strolling through to see where my span length closest fits the available size timbers and you can see here in this case I need some joists of dimensions 47 by 120 millimeters to achieve a 2.8 meter span. In my case I'm actually using 47 by 125 timbers as it was the closest fit I could find for my timber yard and it's always better to get something slightly bigger than slightly smaller. I mentioned this in the last video, but I just wanted to quickly show you here how I've calculated all of the measurements in SketchUp first before cutting any wood. One of the techniques I've followed in the whole build is to mark centres and then align the centre of the stud or joist to these markings when fixing, rather than trying to mark up the edges of each stud. The reality is the wood isn't exactly cut to the size specified, often known in the industry as nominal versus actual. So by working against centres, it doesn't matter how thick the timber is, I'll always ensure I have the correct or equal spacing. This is a really helpful tool here that allows you to highlight the midpoint in the object, so this gives me the perfect dimensions for each centre line. So now that the measurements are all done, it's time to get started. Whilst I work here on the frame, I will talk to you about one of the other considerations which you'll need to think about, which is the slope or the fall of the roof. Now even though it is called a flat roof, it's not actually flat. There is a slight slope to allow rainwater to run off. There are various recommendations in the industry on the recommended fall or angle for the flat roof, and these will of course vary depending on the materials which you're using. In my case, for an EPDM rubber roof, the minimum recommended fall from the manufacturer is 1 in 80. This means for every 80 centimetres, the roof will need to fall by 1 centimetre. So to calculate this, I take the length of the roof, which is 355 centimetres, and divide this by 80. This gives me about 4.4. So I need my roof at the front of the building to be 4.4 centimetres higher than at the rear. The timber I'm using is 47 millimetres in thickness, so I know that I could use one length of this to achieve just over the minimum fall. In fact, because I've included the overhang in my calculations, I should actually get a slightly better fall than that. Now that the majority of the exterior frame is together, I'm going to start putting in the ceiling rafters for the internal ceiling. If for no other reason, then it's easier to do it without the exterior roof on the top. To help minimise the impact to the ceiling height, and also keeping a gap between the two ceilings, as well as room for ventilation, I've decided to go with some 2x3s instead of 2x4s for the ceiling. This should be fine given that it only needs to support the weight of the plasterboard and installation. Now to attach the roof, there are a few ways of going about it, but I decided to use some heavy duty angle brackets and fit two at each end of the rafter, so four in total. This sandwiches the timber in place and gives it a really nice strong fixing. 
Now it's time for the roof frame to go on. I kept out some of the rafters to reduce the weight as I was a bit worried it was going to be too heavy to lift. Once the roof was on and in position, we squared it up, fixed in a couple of angle brackets to keep it in place, and then I continued to add the remaining rafters and lockets before finishing it off by tying the whole structure down with more screws and brackets. Now I'm adding some perimeter noggins to the internal ceiling rafters to A give the ceiling a bit more strength and rigidity and also give me something to fix the plasterboard to around the edges of the ceiling. And here is the timber framework for the internal and exterior roof completed. The next step is to add the OSB sheets. And there we go, there's the OSB sheeting on board and the roof structure finally completed. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please do like and subscribe to follow the progress on the build. In the next video we'll be finishing the roof and this will include the fitting of the fascia soffits and the EPDM rubber roof. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.